Hi, I'm Richard from Frozen Well. This week I've decided to take part in the Low Res Jam 2020. This video will document the making of my entry. First of all, a bit of background to the jam. It's an annual jam that's been going for a few years now, and the main restriction is a game that you make can take up an area of no more than 64 by 64 pixels, hence the title of the jam, Low Res. As well as this restriction, there are 10 different themes that you can choose from, although this isn't compulsory. You can choose none of them, one of as many of the themes as you want. Ok, Saturday morning, the themes were released while I was asleep, so let's take a look at the themes and see what we have to work with. On the first read through, the one that jumps out to me is Hot Dogs. No idea why, I just think that it could make a good game. I set to work coming up with a game idea, and after a few hours I have the plan made for a platform game. In the game you're going to be a hot dog that has to rescue his children that have been kidnapped by the evil king of the burgers. A bit of a fast food rivalry going on here. So I set to work on creating a character for the player. It's at this point after a few hours working on my game that I realise I'm just not feeling this idea and begin to regret starting with this idea so quickly. After all it's a two week jam so there's no rush to come up with an idea immediately. So it's back to looking through the themes. After a while I decided that it would be quite nice to make a shoot 'em up as I've not made one of these for a long time. So looking at the themes there's a couple there that fit the bill for this type of game. First off the game can be set in a parallel universe, as let's face it there's not many spaceships and aliens flying around doing battle in this universe. Well not that we know of anyway. Being a shooter there's really the need to always keep moving otherwise you're going to get killed by the enemies firing in your direction. Therefore that's another theme covered. And also, the aliens must find it pretty terrifying seeing this one spaceship killing them all. So there we have another, you're terrifying. That's covered as well. So that's three themes I've managed to shoehorn into the one game. So feeling a lot more positive on my choice this time, I get started on the game. I decided that whilst the game needs to be 64 by 64 pixels, having it displayed with a border would be a good idea. So the first thing I've done is draw a pixel art TV with a 64 by 64 pixel cutout area to display the game in. This should add to the overall presentation of my game. Next I need to make a start on the game itself because as happy as I am with my TV, without a game to display on it, it'll be pretty useless. I've created a play ship and added it to the layout along with a background. So far the ship can't be controlled, it just moves continually upwards through the level while the space background scrolls below it. I've created different animation frames for the ship when it's moving left and right, which I'll be able to show you once I've added the controls to the game. So that's next. Ok, here you can see that I've now added movement to the player ship, and the animation changes depending on the ship's direction of movement. The ship's limited to the bounds of the screen and can't go flying off into outer space. Next on the list is to give the player's ship a weapon to fire. Without this the aliens and space hazards will make short work of our ship. I'm giving the player a basic laser that can be seen in action here. It's now Sunday evening and I've made a start on the game's first enemies. I've created a system to spawn these enemies. The pink bar that is on screen moves up through the level and when it hits one of the enemy spawners, like the four here, it then creates the enemy, in this case an asteroid. In this clip you can now see the result of this spawning system, as the four asteroids are created and then appear on screen hurling towards our player. I've added a health value to the asteroids and when this reaches zero after a number of hits they then explode with a nice particle effect. I've come up with a name for the game and decided that I'd create a logo for it. Following on from this I decided that I'd make a start on the game's main menu. As you can see here I've added a scrolling background to the menu along with the logo and a play button. I've made a couple of improvements to the menu, the logo is now tweened up and down and the play button reacts to a press from the player. It's the end of Sunday now and I feel that I've made a good start on the game. It's now Wednesday of week one of the jam and I've made a start on the boss for the end of the first level. Currently when the player reaches the end of the level, they trigger the boss appearing, which moves from the right of the screen to the centre, then moves horizontally across the level stopping at the left, middle and right of the screen. Next I need to add some weapons and the ability for the player to damage the boss. I 
After a bit of work, I have the boss now functioning as I would like. The boss now fires its weapons when it's stationary, and at this point the player can inflict damage on it. When the boss is moving, it stops firing and engages its shield, so the player can't damage it. When the boss is destroyed, I've added some particle effects for explosions. It's now Thursday evening, and I've been working on another enemy for the game. This time it's an alien that is based on a squid for its visuals. It comes vertically down the screen and uses a sign behaviour to move left and right as it travels. This enemy has no weapons and the player has to shoot or avoid it because it's deadly on touch. Or at least it will be once I had collisions with the player. It's now Sunday and I've been struggling for time to get much work done on the game. I have managed to create another enemy though. This enemy is a UFO that enters the screen from either the left or the right and then moves horizontally across the screen. As it flies across it fires a laser, this goes in the direction of the player's current position. Next I need to get some work done on adding a way of keeping track of players lives and then the game over system. I'll catch up in a bit once I have that working. Ok it's Sunday evening now and after a bit of work I've added a UI element to keep track of the players lives. You can see that here in the top left. When you lose a life the display updates of how many ships you have left. Next, the game over screen. Next up was working on a game over system for the game. I started off by designing the game over sprite. I did this in A sprite and did it in the same style as the game's logo for a consistent feel to the game. Here we see the game over system implemented in the game. When the player loses all the lives, the game over text appears. Then after a few seconds you take them back to the level selection screen. I carried on with adding the finishing touches to the game, next by implementing a countdown system to the start of the level. So instead of just starting the level straight away, the player gets a countdown from free, and then the level starts after this. We've got the start and game over sorted, so next I needed to add a screen to congratulate the player on completing a level and showing the score. Here you can see that very screen. The screen displays a well done message and how many stars the player has scored. You get one star for completing the level, a second if you killed all the enemies, and a third if you did all this while losing no lives. The last major thing that I needed to add to the game was for the player to have the ability to select which level they want to play, so that once they unlock late levels they can just choose to play these instead of always having to start a game from the beginning. Due to the limited screen size I added a horizontally scrolling selection screen which can be seen in action here. There are arrows to press to navigate left and right and then a play button for when you're ready to play that level. Well that's the game completed and ready to submit. Here you can see a brief playthrough of some of the game. If you like what you see and you want to try out the game, go visit my itch page, the link is in the description below. Thanks for watching and please hit the subscribe button to be alerted to all the videos I make.